Life is a journey filled with ups and downs, and there are moments when the road becomes particularly challenging. During tough times, it's natural to feel overwhelmed, stressed, or even defeated. In this video, we'll explore practical strategies of Buddhism to help you deal with tough times in life, allowing you to not only survive, but also thrive in the face of adversity. Step 1. Adjusting Your Mentality In the journey of life, we often encounter challenging times that test the strength of our spirit. Buddhism, with its profound teachings, provides valuable insights on how to navigate through tough times. Central to this guidance is the idea of adjusting your mentality, the lens through which you perceive and interpret the challenges life throws your way. Buddhism teaches us to cultivate a mindset of impermanence. Life is a series of ever-changing moments, and nothing is permanent. In the face of adversity, remembering the impermanence of both joy and suffering can bring a sense of perspective. This understanding allows us to detach ourselves from the intensity of the moment and realize that, like everything else, tough times too shall pass. The practice of mindfulness, a cornerstone of Buddhist philosophy, is instrumental in adjusting your mentality. By being fully present in the current moment without dwelling on the past or anxiously anticipating the future, you can find a calm center amidst the storm. Mindfulness enables you to observe your thoughts and emotions without being consumed by them, fostering a resilient and adaptable mindset. Adjusting your mentality is like putting on a pair of glasses that helps you see the world in a different way. Imagine you have a magical pair of glasses that can make tough times look a bit less scary. That's what adjusting your mentality is all about in Buddhism. When tough times hit, it's easy to feel like they'll last forever. But Buddhism teaches us something important, that nothing lasts forever. The tough times will pass, just like good times do. This is the idea of impermanence. It's like knowing that even on a cloudy day, the sun is still up there, waiting to shine again. Being mindful is another cool trick Buddhism teaches. It's like having a superhero power that lets you stay focused on the present moment. Instead of worrying about the past or stressing about the future, you learn to be right here, right now. It's like pressing a pause button on all the chaos and taking a deep breath. So, why is adjusting your mentality important when tough times show up? Well, it's like having a superpower that helps you stay calm and not get overwhelmed. When you see things with a mindset of impermanence and practice mindfulness, you become more like a superhero facing challenges, strong, steady, and ready for anything. Imagine having a tool that helps you face tough times with courage and not let them knock you down. That's what adjusting your mentality does. It's like having a mental shield that protects you when life gets tough. When you wear the glasses of impermanence, tough times don't seem as daunting. You know they won't stick around forever, and that gives you hope. And when you practice mindfulness, it's like having a secret weapon that keeps you centered and focused, no matter what storm comes your way. So, adjusting your mentality in tough times is not just a fancy idea. It's a practical tool that helps you stand strong when life tries to shake you. It's like having a friend who whispers, Hey, tough times won't last forever, and you've got the power to get through this. And that's a friend worth listening to. Adjusting your mentality in tough times is not about pretending everything is perfect. It's about seeing things from a different angle, a positive angle. It's like flipping a switch in your mind that says, I can handle this. I've got the power to make it through. And that's a pretty awesome way to deal with tough times in life. So, if you're wondering why you should follow this advice from Buddhism, here's the deal. It's like having a guidebook for the roller coaster of life. Adjusting your mentality is your map to navigate the twists and turns, and it's a map that leads you to a place of strength, resilience, and a mindset that can handle anything life throws your way. That's why adjusting your mentality in tough times is not just a good idea. It's your secret weapon for a happier and stronger you. Step 2. Stay positive. Staying positive in the face of adversity is not about denying the existence of challenges. Rather, it involves cultivating an optimistic outlook that acknowledges difficulties while maintaining faith in the possibility of positive outcomes. 
Buddhism encourages the practice of positive thinking, emphasizing the impact of our thoughts on our well-being. One fundamental concept in Buddhism is the law of karma, the belief that our actions, thoughts, and intentions shape our future experiences. By fostering positive thoughts, we create positive karma, paving the way for a more favorable future. When confronted with tough times, consciously redirect your thoughts towards gratitude, hope, and compassion. This mental reorientation can be a powerful catalyst for positive change. Moreover, Buddhism teaches the importance of cultivating loving-kindness and compassion towards oneself and others. During challenging moments, extending compassion to yourself helps alleviate self-criticism and fosters a positive internal dialogue. This self-compassion becomes a wellspring of strength, enabling you to face difficulties with resilience and optimism. Staying positive is like having a bright light in the darkness of tough times. Imagine you're in a dark room and someone hands you a flashlight. That's what staying positive is all about, finding light even when things seem gloomy. When tough times come knocking, it's easy to feel like everything is going wrong. But Buddhism teaches us the power of positive thinking. It's like flipping a switch in your mind from, I can't do this, to, I can find a way through this. It's not about ignoring the problems, but facing them with a belief that things can get better. Positive thoughts are like little superheroes that help you face challenges with a brave heart. When you believe in a brighter tomorrow, you're more likely to find solutions and see opportunities in the midst of difficulties. Imagine having a tool that helps you see the silver lining in even the darkest clouds. That's what staying positive does. It's like having a friend who cheers you on when life feels like a tough race. When you focus on the good stuff, you build a mental muscle that helps you stay strong in tough times. When you stay positive, it's like planting seeds of happiness in your mind. These seeds grow into a garden of hope, and even in tough times, you can find moments of joy. It's not about pretending everything is perfect. It's about choosing to see the good, even when life is challenging. So, why follow this advice from Buddhism? Well, it's like having a toolbox for building a better mindset. Staying positive is not just wishful thinking. It's a practical way to boost your mental strength. It's like having an anchor that keeps you steady when the waves of difficulty try to knock you over. When you stay positive, you become a problem solver. It's like having a superhero cape that helps you tackle challenges head on. And here's the secret. A positive mindset is contagious. It spreads to those around you creating the circle of optimism that makes tough times a little easier to bear. So, staying positive in tough times is not about pretending everything is perfect. It's about choosing to focus on the good stuff, finding light in the darkness, and building a mental fortress that can withstand the storms of life. That's why staying positive is not just a good idea. It's a superpower that turns tough times into opportunities for growth, resilience, and a brighter tomorrow. Step 3. Taking Positive Action Buddhism emphasizes the transformative power of positive actions. When life becomes challenging, taking positive action is a proactive approach to regain control and create positive momentum. Engage in activities that align with your values and contribute positively to your well-being. The practice of right action, one of the components of the Noble Eightfold Path in Buddhism, encourages ethical and compassionate conduct. Actively seek opportunities to make a positive impact, whether through acts of kindness, volunteering, or supporting others in need. By aligning your actions with virtuous principles, you not only contribute to the well-being of others, but also create a positive ripple effect in your own life. Additionally, Buddhism teaches the importance of skillful means, employing effective and ethical strategies to navigate challenges. When faced with adversity, assess the situation and consider the most skillful way to respond. This approach involves a combination of wisdom, compassion, and practicality, leading to positive outcomes. Taking positive action is like being the superhero in your own story. Imagine you have a superhero suit that gives you the power to make a difference in tough times. That's what taking positive action is all about. 
using your strengths to face challenges and make things better. When tough times hit, it's easy to feel stuck or overwhelmed. But Buddhism teaches us that we have the power to take positive steps, no matter how small. It's like having a toolkit that helps you fix things and create positive change. Positive action is not just about wishing for a better situation. It's about doing something to make it happen. Positive actions help you regain a sense of control and direction. Instead of waiting for things to get better, you actively contribute to making them better. It's like being the captain of your own ship, steering it through rough waters with determination. Imagine having a key that unlocks doors to new possibilities. That's what taking positive action does. It's like having a friend who encourages you to take that first step, even when it feels hard. Positive actions build momentum, and each small step adds up to create a big impact on tough times. When you take positive action, it's like planting seeds of change in the soil of challenges. These seeds grow into solutions and opportunities. It's not about waiting for someone else to fix things. It's about realizing that you have the power to shape your own destiny. Taking positive action is like turning the page in your story and creating a plot twist that leads to a happier ending. Taking positive action is not about being a superhero in a comic book. It's about being the hero of your own life. When you actively engage with challenges, you discover your own strength and resilience. It's like discovering hidden superpowers within yourself. When you take positive action, you become a problem solver. It's like having a tool belt that equips you to fix things and build a better future. And here's the magic. Positive actions not only change your life, but also inspire others. Your actions create a ripple effect, influencing those around you to take positive steps in their own lives. So taking positive action in tough times is not about waiting for a hero to save the day. It's about realizing that you are the hero and your actions shape the story of your life. That's why taking positive action is not just a good idea. It's a superpower that transforms tough times into opportunities for growth, resilience, and creating a brighter path forward. Step four, help others. Paradoxically, one of the most effective ways to deal with tough times in your own life is by extending a helping hand to others. Buddhism emphasizes the interconnectedness of all beings and the profound impact of altruism on personal well-being. Helping others not only contributes to the greater good, but also generates a sense of purpose and fulfillment. Engaging in acts of kindness, no matter how small, can create a positive shift in your perspective. By focusing on the needs of others, you momentarily step outside the realm of your own challenges, gaining a broader view of the world. This expanded perspective often brings a sense of gratitude and appreciation for the positive aspects of your life. In Buddhism, the practice of dana or generosity, is highly regarded. Generosity goes beyond material gifts. It encompasses the giving of time, attention, and compassion. By cultivating a generous spirit, you not only make a positive impact on the lives of others, but also create a reservoir of positive energy that can sustain you through tough times. Helping others is like creating a chain of kindness that makes tough times a little easier for everyone. Imagine you have a magic wand that spreads positivity and support. That's what helping others is all about, being a beacon of light in someone else's darkness. When tough times hit, it's easy to get caught up in our own struggles. But Buddhism teaches us that lending a helping hand can be a powerful remedy. It's like having a special power that not only benefits others, but also lifts your own spirits. Helping others is not just about what you give. It's about the positive energy that comes back to you. When you extend kindness to others, it creates a sense of connection and community. In tough times, knowing you're not alone and that others care can be a source of great comfort. It's like building a support system that makes the journey through challenges a bit lighter. Imagine having a secret ingredient that makes tough times more bearable. That's what helping others does. It's like having a friend who reminds you that even in the hardest times, you can make a positive impact. When you help others, you become a source of hope, not just for them, but for yourself as well. When you help others, it's like planting seeds of positivity in the world. 
These seeds grow into a garden of goodwill, and even in tough times, you can find moments of joy in making a difference in someone else's life. It's not about being the superhero. It's about realizing that small acts of kindness can create a big change. Helping others is not just a nice thing to do. It's a way to create a positive ripple effect. When you offer a helping hand, you contribute to a cycle of kindness that has the power to transform tough times into moments of shared strength and support. When you help others, you become a part of something bigger than yourself. It's like being a drop in a pond, creating ripples that spread far and wide. And here's the magic. The more you help others, the more you realize the strength within yourself. Helping others in tough times is not just about making the world better. It's about discovering the joy that comes from being a source of light in someone else's darkness. So, helping others in tough times is not about being a superhero with a cape. It's about realizing that your actions, no matter how small, have the power to make a difference. That's why helping others is not just a good idea. It's a superpower that turns tough times into opportunities for connection, kindness, and a shared journey towards brighter days. Step 5. Get enough sleep. In the hustle and bustle of modern life, the importance of adequate sleep is often underestimated. Buddhism recognizes the profound connection between the quality of your sleep and your mental well-being. Sleep is not merely a physical necessity, but a crucial aspect of maintaining a balanced and resilient mind. The Buddha himself emphasized the value of moderation in all aspects of life, including sleep. Too much or too little sleep can disrupt the delicate equilibrium of the mind. Establishing a consistent sleep routine and creating a conducive sleep environment are essential steps in promoting restful sleep. Mindful awareness of your sleep patterns and the factors that may disrupt your sleep is a key aspect of Buddhist teachings on well-being. By prioritizing and safeguarding your sleep, you enhance your ability to face challenges with clarity and equanimity. A well-rested mind is better equipped to navigate the complexities of life and respond skillfully to adversity. Getting enough sleep is like recharging your superhero powers for the next day. Imagine you have a magical bed that helps you wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the world. That's what getting enough sleep is all about, giving your body and mind the rest they need. When tough times hit, it's easy to lose sleep over worries and stress. But Buddhism teaches us the importance of a good night's sleep in facing challenges. It's like having a reset button for your mind. When you sleep well, it's not just about closing your eyes. It's about giving your body a chance to heal, recharge, and be ready for whatever comes your way. When you're well rested, you can think more clearly and handle stress better. It's like having a shield that protects you from the negative effects of tough times on your mind and body. Sleep is not just a luxury, it's a necessity for your well-being. Imagine having a daily ritual that sets the stage for a better tomorrow. That's what getting enough sleep does. It's like having a friend who says, Hey, take a break and rest. You'll feel better. When you prioritize sleep, you're investing in your own strength and resilience. When you get enough sleep, it's like planting seeds of well-being in your life. These seeds grow into a garden of energy, focus, and a positive outlook. It's not about being lazy. It's about recognizing that a good night's sleep is like a superhero potion that helps you face challenges with a clear mind and a rested body. Getting enough sleep is not just about shutting your eyes. It's about creating a bedtime routine that signals to your body and mind that it's time to recharge. When you make sleep a priority, you're giving yourself the gift of resilience in the face of tough times. When you get enough sleep, you become a better problem solver. It's like having a superpower that allows you to approach challenges with a well-rested mind. And here's the secret. The more you prioritize sleep, the more you realize its impact on your overall well-being. Getting enough sleep in tough times is not just about resting your body. It's about nurturing your mind and soul. So, getting enough sleep in tough times is not about being lazy or avoiding challenges. It's about recognizing that a well-rested you is a stronger you. 
That's why getting enough sleep is not just a good idea. It's a superpower that turns tough times into opportunities for rejuvenation, clarity, and a brighter perspective. Step 6. Create Joy and Satisfaction In the pursuit of happiness, Buddhism offers profound insights into the nature of joy and satisfaction. True happiness, according to Buddhist teachings, arises not from external circumstances, but from the cultivation of inner qualities such as contentment, gratitude, and mindfulness. During tough times, consciously seek out sources of joy and satisfaction, however small they may be. Engage in activities that bring a sense of fulfillment, whether it's spending time in nature, pursuing creative endeavors, or connecting with loved ones. By intentionally creating moments of joy, you shift your focus from what is lacking to the abundance that exists in the present moment. Buddhism encourages the practice of mudita, or sympathetic joy, which involves rejoicing in the happiness and success of others. Cultivating a mindset of joy for others can break the cycle of self-centeredness and expand your capacity for gratitude. In challenging times, the ability to find joy in the well-being of others can be a powerful antidote to negativity and despair. Creating joy and satisfaction is like painting your world with bright colors, even when it seems a bit gray. Imagine you have an artist's palette, and with each stroke, you add a touch of happiness to your life. That's what creating joy and satisfaction is all about, finding moments of delight, no matter how small. When tough times hit, it's easy to forget about joy. But Buddhism teaches us the importance of creating joy, especially in the midst of challenges. It's like having a toolbox of happiness that you can open any time you need a boost. Creating joy is not about waiting for happiness to find you. It's about actively bringing joy into your life. When you actively seek joy, you're not denying the existence of challenges. You're choosing to focus on the positive. It's like having a magic wand that turns tough times into opportunities for joy and gratitude. Imagine having a treasure chest filled with moments that bring a smile to your face. That's what creating joy and satisfaction does. It's like having a friend who says, hey, let's find something that makes us happy right now. When you actively engage in activities that bring joy, you're building a reservoir of positivity. When you create joy and satisfaction, it's like planting seeds of happiness in the soil of challenges. These seeds grow into a garden of resilience and contentment. It's not about pretending everything is perfect. It's about recognizing that joy is a powerful tool for facing tough times with a lighter heart. Creating joy and satisfaction is not just about wishful thinking. It's a practical way to shift your focus from what's wrong to what's right. When you actively pursue joy, you're choosing to be the artist of your own happiness. When you create joy and satisfaction, you become a beacon of positivity. It's like having a lantern that lights up even the darkest corners of tough times. And here's the magic. The more you actively seek joy, the more you realize that happiness is not just a destination. It's a journey you can navigate even in the stormiest weather. So, creating joy and satisfaction in tough times is not about ignoring challenges. It's about realizing that joy is a powerful tool for resilience. That's why creating joy and satisfaction is not just a good idea. It's a superpower that turns tough times into opportunities for happiness, gratitude, and a brighter outlook on life. Step 7. Eat well. The relationship between diet and mental well-being is a central theme in Buddhism. The Buddha emphasized the importance of mindful eating, recognizing that the food we consume has a direct impact on our physical health and mental clarity. In times of adversity, paying attention to your dietary habits can significantly contribute to your overall well-being. Buddhist teachings advocate for a balanced and moderate approach to eating. Avoiding extremes, whether in indulgence or deprivation, supports the harmony of both body and mind. Consciously choose nourishing foods that promote vitality and energy, as they play a crucial role in sustaining your resilience during tough times. Mindful eating, a practice rooted in Buddhist principles, involves savoring each bite with full awareness. This mindful approach to eating not only enhances the enjoyment of food, 
but also fosters a deeper connection to the present moment. By nourishing your body with wholesome and mindful eating, you provide the foundation for a resilient and clear-minded response to life's challenges. Eating well is like fueling your superhero body for the challenges ahead. Imagine you have a special recipe book that helps you create meals that make you strong and ready for anything. That's what eating well is all about, giving your body the right kind of energy to face tough times. When tough times hit, it's common to turn to comfort foods. But Buddhism teaches us the importance of mindful eating, like being aware of what your body needs. It's like having a nutrition compass that guides you toward foods that nourish your body and mind. Eating well is not just about satisfying hunger, it's about building a foundation for resilience. When you choose nutritious foods, you're not just eating, you're investing in your well-being. It's like having a superhero potion that boosts your energy, focus, and overall mood. Imagine having a grocery list that doubles as a roadmap to a healthier you. That's what eating well does. It's like having a friend who says, let's choose foods that make us feel good inside out. When you prioritize nutritious eating, you're giving your body the tools it needs to stay strong in tough times. When you eat well, it's like planting seeds of well-being in your life. These seeds grow into a garden of energy, vitality, and a positive outlook. It's not about dieting or restricting yourself. It's about recognizing that the food you choose has a direct impact on how you feel. Eating well is like having a menu for a happy and healthy you. Eating well is not just about what's on your plate. It's about being aware of how food makes you feel. When you make nutritious choices, you're not just nourishing your body. You're also supporting your mind in facing tough times. When you eat well, you become a superhero for your own health. It's like having a tool belt that equips you with the nutrients needed to face challenges with strength and clarity. And here's the magic. The more you pay attention to what you eat, the more you realize the impact it has on your overall well-being. Eating well in tough times is not just about following a diet. It's about recognizing that the food you choose can be your ally in facing challenges. So, eating well in tough times is not about counting calories or restricting yourself. It's about realizing that the food you eat is like a partner in your journey to resilience. That's why eating well is not just a good idea. It's a superpower that turns tough times into opportunities for nourishment, strength, and a healthier you. Step 8. Take care of your spirit. In the pursuit of well-being, Buddhism recognizes the interconnectedness of mind, body, and spirit. Taking care of your spirit involves nurturing the inner qualities that contribute to a sense of peace, purpose, and resilience. Through mindfulness and contemplative practices, you can cultivate a strong and resilient spirit that serves as a guiding light in tough times. Meditation, a cornerstone of Buddhist practice, is a powerful tool for nurturing the spirit. Regular meditation allows you to cultivate inner calm, develop mental clarity, and strengthen your capacity to face challenges with equanimity. Whether through breath awareness, loving-kindness meditation, or mindfulness practices, the act of turning inward can be a transformative journey toward spiritual well-being. Buddhism also emphasizes the importance of ethical conduct in nurturing the spirit. By aligning your actions with principles of compassion, honesty, and integrity, you create a foundation for a resilient and noble spirit. The practice of mindfulness extends beyond meditation cushions into the fabric of everyday life, shaping your character and guiding your responses to adversity. Taking care of your spirit is like giving your superhero self a spa day for the soul. Imagine you have a self-care checklist that includes activities to nurture your inner self. That's what taking care of your spirit is all about, tending to the part of you that keeps you resilient and grounded. When tough times hit, it's easy to neglect your inner well-being. But Buddhism teaches us that taking care of your spirit is just as important as taking care of your body. It's like having a toolkit of self-care practices that restore balance to your mind and soul. Taking care of your spirit is not about escaping challenges. It's about creating a sanctuary within yourself. When you engage in activities that nourish your spirit, 
You're not just pampering yourself, you're building resilience. It's like having a superhero cape that helps you face difficulties with a centered and calm mindset. Imagine having a daily ritual that rejuvenates your inner self. That's what taking care of your spirit does. It's like having a friend who says, let's do something that brings peace to our soul. When you prioritize self-care, you're cultivating a space within you that supports your overall well-being in tough times. When you take care of your spirit, it's like planting seeds of inner strength in your life. These seeds grow into a garden of calmness, clarity, and a positive outlook. It's not about escaping reality. It's about recognizing that a well-nurtured spirit is your secret weapon for facing challenges with grace. Taking care of your spirit is not just about meditation or mindfulness. It's about integrating practices that resonate with your inner self. When you make self-care a priority, you're not just caring for your spirit. You're creating a foundation for resilience in the face of tough times. When you take care of your spirit, you become a guardian of your own well-being. It's like having a lantern that lights up the path through challenges, helping you navigate with a sense of peace. And here's the magic. The more you tend to your inner self, the more you realize the strength and resilience that reside within you. Taking care of your spirit in tough times is not about escaping reality. It's about recognizing that your inner well-being is your anchor in the storm. So, taking care of your spirit in tough times is not about adding more to your to-do list. It's about realizing that the well-nurtured spirit within you is the foundation for facing challenges with resilience and a sense of inner peace. That's why taking care of your spirit is not just a good idea. It's a superpower that turns tough times into opportunities for self-nurturing, strength, and a well-balanced you. Step 9. Deal better with hard times. Dealing better with hard times requires a multifaceted approach rooted in the wisdom of Buddhist teachings. One essential aspect is the cultivation of equanimity, a balanced and steady state of mind in the face of life's ups and downs. Buddhism teaches that, by developing equanimity, you can navigate through challenges without being unduly swayed by the turbulence of emotions. The Four Noble Truths, a foundational teaching in Buddhism, provide a framework for understanding and transcending suffering. Acknowledge the reality of suffering, understand its origins, realize its cessation is possible, and follow the path to liberation. By embracing these truths, you develop a profound insight into the nature of challenges, paving the way for a skillful and transformative response. Acceptance is another key element in dealing with hard times. Buddhism teaches that resistance to the present moment creates suffering. Instead of battling against the tide of adversity, practice acceptance of what is. This does not imply passive resignation, but an empowered acknowledgement of the present reality. From a place of acceptance, you can discern the most effective and skillful ways to respond to challenges. Learning to deal better with hard times is like becoming a wise wizard who can handle any challenge that comes your way. Imagine you have a magical book of life lessons that guides you through difficulties. That's what dealing better with hard times is all about. Gaining wisdom and strength in the face of challenges. When tough times hit, it's easy to feel overwhelmed or lost. But Buddhism teaches us that dealing better with hard times is a skill we can develop. It's like having a toolkit of strategies that help you navigate through challenges without letting them break you. Dealing better with hard times is not about avoiding difficulties, it's about facing them with courage and resilience. When you develop the skill of dealing better with hard times, you're not just reacting to challenges, you're responding with wisdom. It's like having a compass that guides you through the storm, helping you find your way to calmer waters. Imagine having a mentor who shares valuable insights on navigating life's challenges. That's what dealing better with hard times does. It's like having a friend who says, let's learn from this experience and come out stronger. When you prioritize developing this skill, you're investing in your own growth and resilience. When you deal better with hard times, it's like planting seeds of wisdom in your life. These seeds grow into a garden of inner strength, adaptability, and a positive mindset. It's not about pretending challenges don't exist. 
It's about recognizing that you have the ability to face them with a clear and focused mind. Dealing better with hard times is not just about positive thinking. It's about adopting a mindset that sees challenges as opportunities for growth. When you learn to navigate through difficulties, you're not just enduring, you're evolving. When you deal better with hard times, you become a wise navigator of your own life. It's like having a treasure map that leads you through the twists and turns with confidence. And here's the magic. The more you develop this skill, the more you realize that hard times are not the end of your story. They are chapters that make you stronger and wiser. So, dealing better with hard times is not about avoiding challenges or pretending everything is perfect. It's about recognizing that life has its ups and downs, and you have the ability to navigate through them with resilience and wisdom. That's why dealing better with hard times is not just a good idea. It's a superpower that turns tough times into opportunities for growth, strength, and a wiser you. Step 10. Trust yourself that whatever happens, you'll handle it. At the heart of Buddhist teachings on resilience is the cultivation of trust. Trust in yourself and trust in the unfolding of life. This trust is not based on the illusion of control over external circumstances, but on the deep understanding that you possess the inner resources to navigate through any challenge. In the face of uncertainty, trust in yourself involves tapping into your innate wisdom and intuition. Buddhism teaches that each individual possesses the seed of enlightenment within, and by turning inward, you can access the clarity and guidance needed to navigate tough times. Trusting yourself is an act of self-empowerment, acknowledging your inherent capacity to respond skillfully to life's challenges. Trust in the process of life itself is a central theme in Buddhism. Life unfolds in accordance with its own rhythm, and often the unexpected turns lead to profound growth and transformation. By relinquishing the need for absolute control and cultivating trust in the unfolding of life, you open yourself to the possibility of positive outcomes emerging from even the most challenging circumstances. Trusting yourself is like believing in the superhero within you, ready to face whatever challenges come your way. Imagine you have an invisible shield that says, I've got this. That's what trusting yourself is all about, recognizing your inner strength and knowing that you can handle whatever life throws at you. When tough times hit, self-doubt often creeps in. But Buddhism teaches us the importance of trusting ourselves. It's like having a compass that points to your inner wisdom, reminding you that you have the capacity to navigate through difficulties. Trusting yourself is not about having all the answers. It's about having faith in your ability to find them. When you trust yourself, you're not paralyzed by fear or overwhelmed by doubt. It's like having a guiding star within you that leads you through the darkness of challenges. Imagine having a mantra that says, I am capable and I can handle whatever comes my way. That's what trusting yourself does. It's like having a friend who whispers, you've got the strength to get through this. Trust yourself. When you prioritize trusting yourself, you're choosing to be your own biggest supporter. When you trust yourself, it's like planting seeds of confidence in your life. These seeds grow into a garden of self-assurance, courage, and a positive mindset. It's not about being arrogant. It's about recognizing that you are your best ally in facing tough times. Trusting yourself is not just about being confident. It's about acknowledging that you possess an inner reservoir of strength and resilience. When you cultivate this trust, you're not just surviving, you're thriving. When you trust yourself, you become the hero of your own story. It's like having a script that says, no matter what happens, I trust myself to handle it. And here's the magic. The more you trust yourself, the more you realize that challenges are not roadblocks. They are stepping stones to a stronger and more capable you. So, Trusting yourself in tough times is not about having all the answers or pretending you're invincible. It's about recognizing your own power and knowing that you are equipped to face whatever life throws at you. That's why trusting yourself is not just a good idea. It's a superpower that turns tough times into opportunities for self-discovery, resilience, and a more confident you. The teachings of Buddhism provide a profound and practical guide for dealing with tough times in life. 
by adjusting your mentality, staying positive, taking positive action, helping others, getting enough sleep, creating joy and satisfaction, eating well, taking care of your spirit, and dealing better with hard times, you can navigate through challenges with resilience, grace, and a deep sense of trust in yourself and the unfolding of life's journey. May these teachings inspire and empower you on your path to well-being and inner peace.